What's going on guys, Captain Jack here with another video brought to you by the Minecrafters. I have been playing Age of Engineering and this is my second playthrough. As you'll note by the uh, video description, it's uh, I've labeled it an Age of Engineering guide and it is by no means a comprehensive guide and I have not included everything in it and I have not done everything the best way possible. So I don't want anyone screaming at me saying, oh, you should have done this, you should have done that. This is just the way I did it, and I've done it twice. Um, the first playthrough, I played with uh, Ingram and Chief Diesel and Shiny and Zelda and everybody, and uh, they made it to about age 9, and then I had to finish by myself, which is fine. Um, but uh, definitely learned a lot in the first playthrough that helped me in the second playthrough. So I am just here to share a bunch of things with you that maybe you didn't know, maybe you do know. Um, if you haven't started the mod pack yet, it is a fantastic mod pack. I definitely highly recommend it. It's awesome if you're in the middle of it. Um, I think there's a lot of things in here that I might uh, mention that would be helpful to you. And uh, maybe if you want to play it again, you can do things maybe a little bit differently, maybe um, a way that I might have done it. Um, and if you want to drop in the comment below some things that maybe you found helpful or that uh, maybe people can like your comment uh, and bring to the top so that you can get all the credit for it. Um, anyways, I'm going to try to throw a lot of information at you guys really quickly. Um, I'm going to provide a brief overview of the pack. Um, if you go up here to the guide in the top left, and I'm sorry my GUI scale is very small um, just uh, because it's easier to see some of these things. Um, this is a progression-based mod pack, and uh, it's divided into different ages. There are 14 of them. So as soon as you harvest a cobblestone, you basically get into the Stone Age. And uh, each age is unlocked by crafting an item. Um, and it's always a single item. And if you search for triggers down here, you can see all the triggers here. So the four hammer triggers age one, the calculator triggers age two, the empower age three, the casing age four, and so on and so forth. And uh, the recipes have been tweaked and they're a little bit difficult. This is definitely a harder mod pack. Uh, but once you um, continue to progress through the ages, um, the things before it become easier and easier and uh, kind of ends up becoming harder and harder to make the end stuff. Um, but it's a very rewarding mod pack to play. Um, so the ages here, you can you can click on any of these and it will give you a very comprehensive guide. It's very useful. Um, if you're ever stuck, go to the guide. Um, also, if you're ever stuck, two good resources I'm going to leave with you guys are the AOE Discord chat, which the link will be in the description, and also a really great guide written by somebody who um, I can't seem to find who made it. I think it's one of the guys that hangs out in the AOE chat all the time, and I will link that to you as well. Now, I am going to kind of um, divide these ages in half, and I am going to um, give you like seven different milestones that I found um, were things that I was seeking to progress towards uh, because I knew um, kind of how the pack progressed, and I knew what I was aiming for this time around. Um, so I aimed for different things and I'm gonna list them all on the screen for you right now so I'm gonna call them like milestones here okay so the first one is um, build a tool forge and a tinkers construct hammer the second one is the AA miners lens third diesel generators um, fourth RF tool storage fifth replicator sixth AOE automation um, six is an increase in power gen. Again, we'll go over that. And seventh is the atomic multiplier. And we're going to go all those over all those um, in details. Those are the things that you'll have to look forward to. Now, um, when you start out the pack, you're going to want to make your smeltery, just like it says in the guide. You make your smeltery um, to get uh, you to be able to smelt some ores. Um, this is my base. I'll just kind of wing around a little bit. Um, once you're able to smelt ores, you basically need the the forge hammer. You need to build the forge hammer. Um, you need to build the um, IC2 blast furnace to get steel. And once you get steel, you can make um, a whole bunch of other things. And the uh, ages progress accordingly. Now let's talk about the tool forge and the tool and the, and the hammer real quick. Basically, this is a mining quality of life upgrade. And most of these are all quality of life upgrades. Um, you want to make the tool forge. I don't have it here. Um, let me see my hammer. Here it is. I use the hammer um, with the width plus plus haste and luck. That was fantastic. Um, this is the one I made as soon as I possibly could harvest cobalt and ardite. 
Um, and this will allow you to basically mine faster. Nobody wants to mine with the little pickaxe, so the hammer is a quality of life upgrade that you need to get to as quickly as possible so you can mine as many resources as possible as quickly as possible. So that's fantastic. Um, storage drawers are also going to be useful. You're going to want to make a lot of storage drawers. You're going to want to put all your like individual crap that you only have one and two of in, uh, in separate chests. Uh, but your bulk items like cobblestone, sand, gravel, so on and so forth, you're going to want to put those in some storage drawers. The second thing we're going to talk about um, is... First, power. Um, I used three water wheels and tore them down as fast as I possibly could. Um, I actually used oil generation in this pack. Um, I used canola oil. I made a garden cloche um, for that, and that worked out pretty good. I ran off three oil generators. Where am I looking for the mining world here? Um, the second milestone I, I had mentioned was the AA mining lens, and this thing is absolutely fantastic. Now, there are other ways of automated resource mining, um, but this one is the one I used for both playthroughs and it's basically it basically allows you to to stop having to manually mining most resources by like age four um which is awesome um so what i have here is da, 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 what's not working this is backed up oh this is not working okay so this is what it is it's the atomic reconstructor and it has a lens of the miner on it and it's behind there right there it's a lens of the miner um, and it's hooked up to a timer which is sending a redstone pulse through three repeaters and the reason why i had three repeaters is because it couldn't pulse too quickly otherwise it would break a piece of cobblestone and you'll get nothing i have an auto placer an auto breaker and then some hopper automation this is optional the powered furnace what i did was um, in, in the beginning i saved all of my diorite and andesite and stuff like that because that all actually counts as stone and i just loaded it into a hopper and i had it running through this machine because i didn't want to spend um, the power to run a powered furnace but a crappy tier two cobble gen i think even tier one is fine um, running through a regular old crappy powered furnace and into the block placer on the other side there um, will basically net you passive resource gen um, well into the game. Um, so how does this thing work? So I have it hooked up to a lot of ticks here. Um, I'm going to change the 300 ticks. Uh, basically, it just turns a piece of stone into an ore, and then the auto breaker harvests it and puts it in this block. Um, and the key to this is, is as you get more power gen, so right now this is not using a lot of power at all. It's using, um, yeah, about, yeah, about a hundred maybe. Every time this thing goes off, it, it, or every time this goes off, it, uh, reduces a little bit. But basically what I did was if you watch on the left side there, the atomic reconstructor's power, um, I had to adjust the timer. I just kept adjusting the timer where it would go off as soon as it was full again, um, so that way I could mine it as fast as possible. Now, if I were to take, actually, I'm just going to remove this and remove this, and I'm going to put this down, which will allow it to really hammer out some power. I'm going to change this to about 80 ticks, which is, I think, one of the lowest clicks that you can, you can bring it down to reasonably. Um, and this basically is getting you an ore like every couple seconds, and it's just a random ore. Um, but it just kind of goes to show how powerful this actually is. And you will have more ore and resources than you know what to even do with by about age five or six. So I cannot possibly emphasize, em emphasize enough um, how great this little rig is here. All right, now I'm obviously making a pretty big leap here, but the next thing um, that was a milestone for me was that I wanted to work towards diesel generators. And the diesel gens will basically supply you enough power to last you deep into um, age six, seven, eight, nine, um, and beyond. I just left these here. I'm just going to real quickly um, show you how I did it. I'm not going to go into a lot of depth on this. A lot of people have videos. So um, I basically had two diesel gens. The floor is driving me nuts because I accidentally built this one off the wall here. But anyways, um, four garden cloches running melons into compacting drawers um, will fully power two diesel gens. So you just want to have your fermenter with the melons in here, and that is making ethanol. And then the squeezer over here with the melon seeds, and this will uh, refine into uh, biodiesel. In order to get the melon seeds, I ran it through a mechanical crafter, which is um, available at low ages. Um, so I had 
Um, the cloches running melons through a chest into a compacting drawer into here, crafted it up, threw it in here, and uh, both of these provide over 4,000 RF per tick, so this is 8,000 RF per tick, and you can get this pretty early on. And as soon as you get these diesel generators, um, you can use them with that um, auto or minor rig that I just showed you to start getting resources at an insanely fast clip. One quick note before we move on, I don't actually have one set up because I stopped having any use for it, but the uh, immersive engineering metal press um, makes plates way faster than the metal formers from IC2 if they're not overclocked. Um, so what I did was I just automated it um, with the extra utilities, um, little transfer pipes, uh, and I just left um, a whole bunch of like iron and I just made thousands of plates. I just like just let it run all the time and it was uh, super awesome. Um, the next milestone here is the um, RF tools storage scanner and this is a massive quality of life increase here. In the previous playthrough I used I used the inventory panel first. I'm sorry this is so small. Um, but the uh, Ender IO inventory panel is not worth it in my opinion. Um, I wasted a lot of time setting it up when basically this was right in the next stage um, and it was within reach. So this time around I skipped it, went right to this, and I got it pretty quickly. So that was good. Um, what you do here with this is you just take the storage scanner and put it next to your drawer controller. So you're probably going to have a whole bunch of drawers with a whole bunch of stuff in it because you don't have enough room. Um, and then you want to take the storage scanner and then you want to scan and then you want to make sure they're routable and then you want to make sure the drawer controller is at the top. Um, so you can move it to the bottom but the problem is it's going to prioritize the other whatever storage blocks you have around it first over the drawer controller and you want to prioritize this so all of your stuff that's in drawers gets loaded into the drawer controller first before it actually uses any of the storage on the storage uh, modules and go straight to tier 3. There's no reason to build um, a tier 1 or tier two of this. So this is a this is a big quality of life upgrade. All right, next we're gonna jump straight to H7 and the replicator and the mass fabricator. Okay, fantastic. The uh, s uh, the pattern storage is actually what nets you the trophy for H7, um, but this is really Im important and this definitely helped me a lot. Um, so what I did was I made two reactors. They're still sitting here. All this crap. I just haven't touched this for ages. It's got a crappy MFE. Um, I had it powered, um, or I had a redstone conduit, conduit um, hooked up to this so that it would turn on and off and it wouldn't waste any energy. Um, I used this design. Uh, actually, don't look at that one because that top corner is messed up. This is the correct design here. These are all filled with quad cells. or seven of them. It makes like 420U per tick. Everybody uses a design. Um, had two of these running. Um, in order to make IC2 power, I got those as quickly as possible. I use the power in the molecular transformer. Um, and in my opinion, and I know out there it's, it's I guess, apparently cheaper to make iridium ore with um, UU matter using the mass fabricator. But I found that the UU matter was better used on other things. So what I did was I just threw a hopper on this thing and ran a whole bunch of iron through it. And ever so slowly, I got a lot of iridium ore. And you're also going to have to use that for scenarium and scenarium parts. Once I got enough iridium ore, I made an, an ultimate hybrid solar panel immediately. Hooked it back up to the molecular transformer and ran more iron through to get more iridium. And what I did was I kept throwing every single bit of iridium that I got back into uh, making more ultimate hybrid solars. And the more ultimate hybrid solars I crafted, the faster I would get more ultimate hybrid solars. So eventually I had a whole ton of them out here, um, re removed basically the need for the reactors at all, except for the little bit of plutonium that I ended up needing. Um, and eventually you can make tons and tons of UU matter very quickly. So I relied on ultimate hybrid solars um, very early on. Um, great things about the replicator, you can replicate sturdy casings. These are the most useful things that I found. Um, machine chassis, basic capacitors, okay? Tons of base capacitors. You do not want to make these things. They acquired empowered Restonia, copper electron tubes. There isn't even a need to automate these with any of these other machines. You can make all the base capacitors you need um, once you're in H7, obviously, with the replicator. The power cell card, while it has a high cost of 1.95 buckets, almost two buckets of UU matter, um, I these things are awful to craft. Um, and I used, I always just made them with UU matter. Um, machine blocks, that's another age, that's age 9 or something, or 8, I think. Uh, matter transmitter and matter receivers, again, massive pain to craft these things. So craft one of each, run them through your scanner, and then never craft them again. Um, you can also use plutonium. This is a great way to get steel, too. I mean, 
it makes steel really, <laughs> really quickly. Um, it's kind of the lazy man's way out. And if you have plenty of UU matter to use, I mean, go for it, right? Um, there's Iridium more machine frames from RF tools. Never make those again. Um, machine chassis, anyways. So this is a big thing. And the biggest takeaway from this I, that I can, you know, I can give you as advice: throw all of your Iridium back into making tons and tons and tons and tons of Ultimate Hybrid Solars. And eventually, I got to the point where I could craft five at a time, then ten at a time. Um, and I had all the power that I ever needed. So um, that is the replicator. One more quick note before we moved on. I did not use advanced generators. Um, completely skipped them in both playthroughs. And it actually allowed me to run these um, nuclear reactors. I maybe ran them th three or four, five cycles max. And I never ran them again. And I had plenty of plutonium to last me um, all straight into the end game. All right, the next one's a big one, AE2. Um, my best advice is automate everything. Um, build a molecular transformer. Uh, you can see down here. Actually, I can start showing you guys this stuff. This was blown up by a creeper. Um, this was enough to last me until endgame. I actually just ran out of uh, room for recipes in here. Um, they're all fully upgraded and stuff. I just started with two towers. Um, really simple design. There's nothing fantastic about this. I could have put more um, molecular assemblers on there to make it a little bit faster. Um, but yes, when you get to AE, automate everything. So as soon as I was able to, I made all these interfaces, I made all these machines, and I threw them here. And this is these have been here for a long time. This room is like one of the oldest rooms here. Um, you do not want to manually craft anything. Here as well, everything is automated. Um, stuff is going through the floor here. Um, automate everything. Automate all this crap. AE, AE, automate, automate. Um, before you can do that, though, you're going to need to make inscribers, and you're going to need to automate the inscribers. Um, and this design really didn't change very much. Um, these are all the inscribers that are automated here. Um, didn't automate this. I didn't bother. I just threw a bunch of stacks of the Certus seeds in there, and it wasn't worth it, in my opinion, because I only use it like three times. But I made a lot per thing. Um, you will need the uh, circuit production chamber, and this is kind of a bad example to show you guys because this is like the, the second tier's worth of them. Um, but these things are making circuits very fast. I have way too many circuits. Um, hopefully, I should just turn this thing off. Um, you're going to need a bunch of carpenters. I think you're only going to need four carpenters um, with patterns to make all the forestry circuits. Um, and then you just set the patterns in there. And then you have the patterns in the inscribers and yada, yada, yada. You can look at another video to, um, <clears throat> to see how to automate the inscribers. But uh, definitely a must do. Automate all this first and then start making all of your... AE2 stuff. Um, once you also have AE2, two quick notes. Let me oop, let me look down here. Oh, one more, one more. Oh, oh, hello, sir. Wow, apparently my base is not secure at all. Um, I have recyclers going here. These are making um, scrap for my mass fab up there. Um, two quick things you're gonna want to do: run bauxite through an industrial grinder. Now we're getting into later ages here. Um, and that will give you like titanium or something. I think there's some sitting in here. Yeah, titanium dust. And then you're going to want to crush all of your rubies and throw that through um, also an industrial electrolyzer to make um, chrome because you're going to need a whole bunch of chrome. So um, definitely automate titanium and chrome. I don't care how you do it. Just automate titanium and chrome. Um, once you have chrome, do not use an IC2 blast furnace. Holy crap, they're so freaking slow. This thing is awful. Don't use that. Use um, use the arc furnace here and uh, throw, I don't know what's going on here, throw all your uh, chrome and titanium through the arc furnace. That'll make it very quickly. Uh, while we're down here, um, never got past tier three void ore miners, just didn't need to. Um, I just made this one because I actually ran out of obsidian um, when I started to need to make end crystals. Here's my ore processing mechanism, in my opinion. It's not even worth it. Um, by the time you have mechanism, you have so many ores that why, why do you need to process like seven at a time? Like, really, come on. Um, these electric crushers, electric furnaces from Neotech are awesome. I have them upgraded with a network card, octa-core, and DDR4 memory modules to make them extremely quick. This is all you need. This is my entire ore processing setup right there. And finally, I do have a crappy big reactor which stopped running to make a whole bunch of uh, plutonium because you need that for for the end 
for the end, for the end. So that's that. AE2, automate everything. One quick thing here. Um, once you can make them, make block cutting machines. Do not make plates with a metal former. They are so slow. Use a block cutting machine. Overclock the crap out of these things. And uh, program your system to make um, blocks of whatever type of ore you have. And then run them through here. I promise you it will definitely be worth it. All right, let's go over some space age tips before we get into the next milestone here. Um, so what I did was I made one dialing device, a matter transmitter, a matter receiver. And then what I did was I flew to all the different planets, so Mars, Mercury, Neptune, Eris, that will give you all of the ores that you need um, to progress later into the end game. And what I did was, let me just dial in, let's say Mars. I got my spacesuit on. Um, also, don't bother upgrading your spacesuit with all of the um, possible upgrades that you can make. It's just not worth it. Um, and what I did was I just dropped a crappy basic capacitor next to one matter receiver. And then um, RF tool or the uh, FTB utilities is installed in the server that I'm playing on. So I did slash home to get back. But I also could have used the charged porter to just pop right back. You fly your rocket back to your space station, and you never need to come back, basically. And if you do, you don't have to refly your rocket back to the planet. You have your matter um, transmitter here. So I'm going to use this right now. I'm going to come back here. Um, space station does not need to be elaborate. Um, first time around, I built all the bells and whistles um, to put on the space station, like the, the gravity controller and yada, yada, yada. I just literally built this crappy tiny little thing <laughs> my rocket's sitting up there even though i made a launch pad for it um and then uh your warp controller warp core and so on and so forth here your planet id chips i had a little list of where i needed to go um, nothing special here just drop a matter receiver um use a power cell for for remote uh power and then uh get out of the space age as quickly as you can all right and one last tip about the space age you only ever need all of these machines one single time. That is this age nine or whatever it is, is the only age where you'll ever need any of this stuff. So I just put a bunch of rocket fuel and some elite fluid tanks. They're not hard to make. Uh, excuse me. I skipped the, the fuel loader. I just basically had a whole bunch of uh, tanks and I would just load the rocket manually. You can skip all that crap. It wastes fuel if it just sits there. And also make the wireless crafting terminal terminal as fast as humanly possible as soon as it's available. I'm not going to look at the recipe, but you'll need the Infinity Booster card installed here in order to use it. Um, and you can get this way earlier than I thought in the first playthrough. So uh, this is actually a huge quality of life upgrade, the wireless crafting terminal. Um, while you're on other planets, you can just pick stuff up from your AE2 network. Um, also, forgot to mention, um, this is my crappy Ender Pearl farm that, that I used um, straight from the beginning. I actually skipped the Enderman farm altogether, never needed it. Came in here, harvested a bunch of these manually a few times, um, and this was all I needed. And this lasted me until I could make the Flawless Greenhouse, and the Flawless Greenhouse made about 20,000 Ender Pearls in maybe 20 minutes. So that's uh, something that maybe you can save yourself some aggravation on. Just skip the Enderman mob farm, just make one of these. Um, I dumped all my solar panels here, didn't use the water wheel things because I was lazy. These are super easy, super cheap, chunk load them, throw them in the mining world and be done. And while I'm here, um, I have this automated, the conductor mask to make all my electric diamonds and stuff. Um, I just have it being um, dumped out using a, uh, an ME interface. It goes into here, gets sucked out and sucked back. So uh, nothing special here. That's what I use the mining world for. And uh, yeah, so those are... Those are the uh, tips for the space age. And oh, I also use the building block. What is it? Uh, the builder's block right here from RF tools, um, along with a power cell, an inner chest, and a lever. And that's how I mined all of the planets. All right, the next milestone I have was kind of the vague one, uh, but that was an increase in power generation and also power storage. So we're getting pretty deep into the game here, um, the Draconic Age. Uh, what I did was, I think earlier than the Dr Draconic Age, I made a Tier 3 um, environmental tech solar panel or solar array thing. And uh, that really boosted my, my power production. It allowed me to run that building block quarry on the planets at, at full speed. Um, it, it added like 15,000 or 20,000, whatever it is, RF per tick. Um, also, as soon as you get some nether stars, uh, make a, a weather controller for rain and for, for daylight if you're not in the mining world. So that way it can be sunny all the time for your ultimate hybrid solars out there. So 
Um, when you make the uh, the draconic energy core, skip straight to tier seven. I mean, don't bother tearing it down. By this time, you should have plenty of draconium. And if you don't, throw a purple lens on your um, your uh, void ore miner, and you'll get way more than you'll you'll ever need um, very quickly. So straight to tier seven is my advice on this. Um, once you get into mechanism, which do 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 is up here. Right here, make sure you automate it immediately so that it knows how to make all the circuits and stuff. Change your patterns from IC2 circuits over to mechanism circuits. They will be made faster, I can assure you. Um, also with mechanism, the heat generator is what you have to start with, but move to the gas generator as soon as possible. It's The first time I played, I, I made this whole freaking stupid lava generated... Um, heat gen set up and I ended up tearing it down in like five minutes after I had enough power so you can make ethylene pretty quickly uh, pretty efficiently um, with a garden cloche sending uh, melons into this thing making biofuel into this thing the PRC making um, ethylene into the gas burning generator and so on and so forth and this is a little bit of a mess up here I, I actually don't need any of this anymore uh, but yeah switch to mechanism circuits as um, soon as you can. The other thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to make a wither farm. This is maybe a little bit before this, uh, but use this um, reinforced obsidian um, to make a wither farm. And uh, you can do withers a couple ways. I think maybe just two ways. One is you can harvest all the skeletons and stuff for them, or you can just use the RF tool spawner. And I would highly recommend the RF tool spawner. The thing's freaking awesome. Um, all you got to do is, where are these things? Like, just load up some some soul stand and it just makes a whole ton of withers and it just kills them instantly and I just kind of just let it go like look at all these look at all these nether stars it's completely safe it's all in case just don't leave it open uh, make sure you hook it up to an experience obelisk um, and uh, a vacuum chest to collect all the items protect the spawner block um, back there is three garden cloches I'm using to make carrots to feed into it and uh, definitely the RF tools um, is the way to go. Now down here, I only ended up ever needing um, uh, three actually. I needed three powered spawners. One for blue slime, so I could make uh, powered palace, I think. Um, one for blaze and one for gas. Gas you're going to need later on because in order to summon the ender dragon, you need these end crystals and the pattern requires gas tier and another star. And then blazes, you're going to need tons of blaze rods for uh, fire diamonds. Um, so that's all I ended up needing um, for those. I, I didn't actually wire it in. I just like manually turn these things on and off. Um, and uh, your first grinder should be used in your uh, your wither spawner so you can make a bunch of draconic cores. Um, right here, speaking of draconic cores, this is, it's actually torn apart. I had, um, what did I have here? A chisels and bits fluid tank here. It was getting annoying and I didn't want to have to deal with the lag it was creating. Um, but basically, this was the way I was generating singularities. Okay, and I have 4,700 singularities. I was using phantom faces to export on um, the chisels and bits water because the storage bus was on the chisels and bits tank, which was being filled by the transfer nodes. Um, and I was using that um, to, to generate a whole bunch of singularities. I got more than I would ever need. So that is that. All right, before we get into the last milestone, Let's talk about bees. Everybody loves bees, right? No, everybody doesn't love bees. Uh, bees can be complicated, it can be daunting, but I'm gonna really simplify it for you guys here. You do not need to start bees like as soon as you can. Um, I thought that the first playthrough, and I started bees, and I spent a ton of time. I had a, my beelizer out. I was looking at dominant, not dominant traits. I was trying to breed exactly the right bees to get exactly the right results. And it was a huge waste of time. Um, I didn't start bees until um, after I got AE2, which is like age 8, age 9. There is literally no need for it. Um, once you have AE, it becomes a little bit easier. All I did was I made a whole ton of apiaries. And this is my exact bee setup. It literally never changed. I went out. I went to the mining world. I scooped up a bunch of bees. I made sure I got enough pristine stock bees. You see that there? To fill every single one of these, I threw them all together and I started making a bunch of forest and meadows drones. Once I got a whole ton of forest and meadows drones, then I started mix them, mixing them up. 
and just automate them. Who even cares what the result is? Just automate them. Have them go in a circle and then have them be pulled out into your AE system. You'll find that after you run it through a few times, eventually one of these, the chances are so high that one of them turns into a common that it's crazy. You don't you don't need a bee elizer. You literally don't need one. So as soon as you get a common bee, just let it go. Let it make a stack of common bees. And then when it's through, just throw a bunch of common bees in like every single one of these. Throw two or three common bees in every single one of them. And you're bound to get a cultivated bee. And then once you get a cultivated queen, then you just rinse and repeat basically. And this literally took me like a couple days. And I just like kind of did other things. And then I came back to it. And I got Imperial and Majestic Bees without any headache at all. And it was absolutely fantastic. So uh, that's my little bit on bees. My second little bit is that the goal of this mod pack is to create the creative vending upgrade, which needs an octuple compressed cobblestone. Um, if somebody tells you that you need to start making this early with uh, cobble gens, they're wrong. You don't. Um, which leads me into my last milestone, and that is the atomic multiplier. Now, oh, I didn't fix that yet. Atomic multipliers are fantastic, and I actually have these making lithium dust right now. So basically, these quadruple anything that you put into it. So if you put in one of these, you're going to get four out, and there is a ton of stuff um, that you can use, or uh, that you can multiply. And in order to get the atomic multiplier, you actually multiplier, you actually need to make a dimension first. And the dimension builder is an extremely hard block to make. Da -da -da, let's pull it up here. Dimension builder, okay? Requires a draconic flux capacitor. It requires a fusion reactor from um, whatever it is. I can't think of the mod. Um, iridium neutron reflector. Um, all this stuff here, um, this probably is the hardest thing to make is a peace essence, and uh, even harder is actually being able to find a jungle so that you can find an ocelot to make this stupid thing. Uh, but once you have this, um, don't bother making more than one dimension unless for some reason it really, really sucks and there's no dimensional ore in it. I made one dimension. Um, it was the one I started out in, in the beginning of the video. I found some dimensional shard ore. I got like two stacks worth, and then you don't need to make any other dimensions. Some people recommend that you make dragon dimensions to get um, to get more dragon hearts so that you can make more awakened draconium, uh, but you can you can multiply all of that with these. So you say I have 43 awakened cores, um, chaotic cores from killing the um, chaos dragon. I can multiply these. Um, so I ended up using this for a lot of things. Um, for for solar panels, so for like um, photovoltaic cells, you're going to want to multiply those. Um, the creative capacitor bank, which is what you want to work towards, um, you can multiply this right here, the solar panel controller tier 4. You can multiply the elite solar panel. You can multiply the chaotic core. You can multiply the vibrant photovoltaic cell. Um, but you can't multiply the solar, this solar panel, this one, or this one. Um, this solar panel, you can multiply the solar panel, um, I think this is four or something. Um, so multiply a lot of these, because these are expensive, and then use them to craft the rest of the stuff. So the atomic multiplier is a huge, 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 huge must. Um, this, um, you are basically going to want to just let your solar panels, I had two tier four solar panels before I, before I tore them down. Just let this fill up. It's not going to be full all the time. In fact, you're gonna, probably going to drain it a few times. I actually used probably like 3 trillion um, total energy as I dumped it into um, replicating cores and everything like that. Um, but the goal is to create a creative capacitor bank. And as soon as you have the first one, every other one gets exponentially easier. Um, and you can just replicate more and more and more and more. So I started out with just um, one atomic multiplier, and then I got more and more and more. And I just have uh, an interface jamming out stable circuits into them all the time. And there we go. I have four chaotic cores. I dump it in again. I'm going to come back, and I'm going to have 16 chaotic cores. Um, so the atomic multiplier is a, is a huge benchmark thing that allows you to just whatever you're short on, you can replicate. And... Uh, Scented paneling is one of those things that you can replicate, and I think a lot of people go this route. The first route, um, the first time I, I made uh, alviaries and everything, and tried to get a whole bunch of resources to make these things. But when you can just multiply them and just let it go, 
um, definitely alleviates a lot of the headache that bees cause. Uh, the advanced dislocator, also um, big quality of life upgrade. This is where I bred my wintry bee because I needed the ice shard for the vacuum freezer, my KS island, my dimension that I was just in, my jungle, nether, mining rope, and so on and so forth. So the advanced dislocator um, is a, a good quality of life upgrade. All right, we are in the home stretch here. So the last thing, and this this is an absolute spiderweb nightmare in here. Uh, when I got to this point on the previous playthrough, I just was like, holy crap, I'm so close. I'm just going to build crap everywhere, which is what I'm in the process of doing right now. So I'm almost done with playthrough two. So to make this thing, you're going to need two creative gas tanks and two creative fluid tanks. And the creative gas tank, the recipe doesn't show properly, which it says right there. Um, these are not just basic gas tanks, you need um, different um, f or gases to put inside of them in order to actually create this thing. And creating these gases <laughs> is a freaking nightmare. Um, so I'm actually done with gases. I just like threw down a creative energy cube, wired everything everywhere, and as soon as I got all the gas that I needed, I just tore down. So this right here hydrogen chloride and I think this is my last let me see what a mess oh DT fuel hold on I need to I need to finish off DT fuel um, see I didn't automate any of this in either playthrough but this is making a whole bunch and then this is actually gonna finish off the last gas so that'll be done in a second let me find the rest of my lithium while I'm at it here I won't, I'll leave one stack just in case, but I think that should that should be plenty to fill up that. So that's, the DT fuel is my last thing. I can actually make a creative gas tank right now. This one's hydrogen chloride, hydrogen chloride. Got this, I got ethylene, I have sodium, I have two clean osmium slurries, and that's my other DT fuel. So that'll be enough to make um, both creative gas tanks. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just rip all this stuff apart and uh, then I'll work on the creative fluids, um, which actually show in the recipe right here. <clears throat> creative fluid tank needs biodiesel, which I already have, um, empowered oil, IC2 hot coolant, um, short mead. Um, so biodiesel is easy. Short mead is also very easy. Um, empowered oil is dumb. I just have to set all that stuff up again. That's probably the worst thing I have to do. And the IC2 hot coolant um, is from... Um, one of those IC2 liquid cooled reactors, which they're not super hard to make. Um, and then vapor of levity, which is obnoxious. Um, but I think I have most of this stuff for it already. Let me just, I have a, actually I'll just use my terminal here. I got all the way down here and then use it. Um, oh, what is this stuff called? I forget what it's called. How do you freaking make this? Oh, grains, that's what they're called. So I have these grains already, and they're also a nightmare to make, um, except once you make one of them, you can just throw them through um, the replicator up there. Oh, actually, I forgot to mention one thing, too. Um, I mentioned cobblestone before I walked up here the first time. Um, this octuple compressed cobblestone, the reason why you don't need to start this early is because you can just replicate it. Um, once you get like a double or triple, just replicate it a bunch of times until you have nine of them to make the next tier and so on and so forth. So this takes about five minutes to make. Um, at the end, this is not difficult at all. Um, so anyways, yeah, so the creative fluids, that's my last thing um, I'm basically working on, and then I'm done. Um, you're going to need 16 creative capacitor banks, um, and then I usually, or I, not usually, I only did, did it one other time, but I made 17 uh, because I needed to have one to replicate um, using the creative vending upgrade after I was done. Um, so the reason why you need 16 of them is the creative ending upgrade. So for each one of these, a gas tank and a fluid tank, you need four um, creative capacitor banks. And all you have to do um, is pick one of these things up and just put them in a crafting grid. And then it will like switch to whatever other one is in there, just like this. So if you're ever not sure, you know, how, you know, if you want to get them back, um, that's all you have to do. So yeah, I'm in the home stretch here. I'm almost there. Um, I guess I could make one of these and get get the trophy. You get a you get a trophy for the creative gas tank and also the creative 
um, fluid tank and the creative capacitor bank. So that's three extra trophies that you actually don't see. Um, and I think that is it. All right, well, I hope this has been helpful for you. Um, I hope the little milestone thing is something that uh, will help you progress. Um, you can see, actually, f how much of a complete nightmare this is. This is all getting ripped down, this thermal evaporation block. I needed this to make uh, uh, whatever crap is pumping through here, some sort of fermented garbage. Um, there's another way you can make it with salt, but definitely do this. You'll need four more mechanism solar panels. Um, so yeah, this is this is uh, where I'm at right now. Hope this tip's been helpful. Definitely need the uh, fishing net here to uh, get you all these raw fish to make your palace. Um, the nutrition module, definitely make yourself some of these. Load it up. You'll never have to eat again. Fantastic. Um, yeah, so uh, like the video if you liked it. We appreciate any comments that you want to leave. Um, I do plan on posting a video of the playthrough one um, and base results, which um, are really cool. I worked on it um, a lot after I got the creative vending upgrade, which allowed me to do some uh, pretty crazy things. Um, I think I showed you guys everything that's in here. Nothing super complicated. Again, um, the best tip I can give you is build with the end in mind. Um, and if you kind of know what you're working towards and what you need um, to do, it definitely helps a lot. But hopefully this video will give you some indication of that. Um, throughout this this mod pack, you'll definitely be tearing stuff down, like the tearing stuff, um, old stuff down, and rebuilding, and tearing it back down, and rebuilding it again. And um, it's a it's a kind of oh yeah docking station used to automate the uh, atomic calculator for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, so that's it. Again, thanks for watching the video, guys, and uh, stay poised for the next video. Which don't hold your breath for it. Get them check out.